Hi, pet lovers. It's Dr. Bob from uh, Sylvania Vet. Thanks for tuning in to Pet Sylvania. Uh, you know, we really have two great sponsors. Uh, Sylvania Vet is uh, is also a sponsor, and uh, they're uh, really happy to loan me to WSYL, and I'm happy to be here. Our logo is uh, a 24-7 pet care destination. That means that we're available 24-7 by telephone, and we have a doctor on call. So please, if you have any problem 24-7, anytime, day or night, you call us, 419-885-442. Two one, and one of our employees will answer your phone. And then Alonco, which is a uh, maker of uh, pharmaceuticals uh, for the veterinary profession, a great company. They have created the, the two newest uh, products in the war against fleas. And as we've watched the progression of flea control go from uh, flea collars and flea sprays and flea powder and flea shampoo and bombs for the house and armfuls of medication to topicals like Frontline and Advantage and Revolution, the newest generation is, uh, is an oral pill that lasts for a month and uh, for flea control only and it can be used in combination with any of the heartworm medications that are out there or frankly if you're still having free problems and your uh, pet has uh, had frontline or one of the other topicals applied it's okay to use it because it's a it's a completely different product and it's safe and that product's called Comfortis and the coolest news about Comfortis is is that they just came out with approval uh, for cats and a cat size and we've been able to uh, start uh, puppies at a younger age because we we have a smaller dosing schedule. So give us a call and we'd be happy to talk to you more about Comfortis. And then the combination pill, Trifexis, that they make, which is the Comfortis plus uh, heartworm preventive. So now we've got a two for a two in one, and then we really make it three in one, hence the name Trifexis, uh, by the uh, addition of internal parasite control that goes with it. It's a great product and uh, uh, is something that you should give serious consideration to. One of the, uh, one of the really uh, great uh, organizations organizations out there for cat lovers is a is an organization uh, called the American Association of Feline Practitioners. And this is a group of people who have a strong interest in uh, in cats and in cat care and fully recognize that uh, the cats are not, are not just a furry dog and that uh, they need special handling, they need special approaches because they have different personalities. They're not a pack-related animal like dogs. They're not as social uh, and interactive as dogs are with the family. And if you Try to if you try to treat your cat like you treat uh, your dog, you're destined to have problems and you're destined to have an unhappy and a, and a stressed cat. So the uh, American Association for uh, Feline Practitioners uh, started an organiz a uh, sort of a sub organization called the Cat Friendly Practice, and there's about 50 criterion that uh, that a, a member of AAFP if they want their practice to receive that designation has to meet, and it has a lot to do with the availability of quality care, quiet, secure places to examine a cat, the ability to do some of the specialized testing that re cats require that uh, that may not be necessary in a uh, in a dog practice. And so the uh, cat-friendly uh, practice designation uh, is, uh, of course, uh, filled with the Sylvania Veterinary Hospital. We're the only uh, practice in Northwest Ohio with that designation as of this point, and we're very proud of that. If you want to learn more about the specialness of cats and specific about cat-friendly practice, you can go to the AAFP website at www.catvet.com and you can uh, go through there and you can search. You'll find information on cat-friendly practice. And one of the great emphasis is that you can learn about things about how to properly transport your cat so that the visit will be less stressful. It can emphasize the importance of annual visits to the veterinarian by your cat for your cat, even if we're talking about a strictly indoor cat. Uh, they're not uh, risk-free in that environment, and there are a lot of changes in the in the life of a cat that can occur on an annual basis, particularly as they start to uh, approach double-digit years. We want our cats to live to be 18 to 20, and uh, we need to see them regularly to help them be able to do that. Pancreatitis uh, is a is a condition of an internal organ in the body. We all have a pancreas. Uh, it has two gr functions. Its uh, main function is uh, to produce insulin, which helps regulate blood sugar. And then it also, and I, I guess I shouldn't say its main function is insulin because the other function is equally important. If you well, that is if you want to digest your food, because the uh, pancreas uh, produces uh, digestive 
list of enzymes that help break down carbohydrates, proteins, and fats and enable the intestinal tract to, uh, to process them so that as the uh, f- food is uh, broken down into its components and it passes through your small intestine, it's absorbed and, uh, and then it becomes a nutrient for uh, the consumer of the food. So the, uh, if you get an infection or an inflammation of the pancreas, um, it can be a it can be a serious problem in dogs. Uh, there are the dogs that if they get into the garbage and they eat a lot of fat, maybe they get in there and they eat the uh, uh, eat the rib bones left over from uh, from a barbecue, and there's a lot of fat on there. Uh, that can uh, that can put too much of a of a load on the pancreas and get it to react. Uh, infection can ascend up through the intestine in, into the ducts of the pancreas and create the uh, the inflammation as well. And this also occurs in cats, and we see a lot of older cats that uh, have a chronic inflammation of the pancreatitis called chronic pancreatitis, and it causes them to lose weight, have a chronically elevated white blood count, and uh, and just kind of deteriorate. They usually have diarrhea, and they frequently have a deficiency in their uh, in their intestinal tract of, uh, of of vitamin B12, which should normally be made uh, by the uh, by the small intestine. So there are special Specialized tests that need to be run, and the the test is called a uh, dog. We call it a CPLI, and uh, there's an in-house test that we can run that will uh, tell us uh, uh, whether or not pancreatitis is is a probability or it's not, and uh, and then we can send out a test uh, to get a more specific number. And having that more specific number on the CPLI uh, gives us prognostic tools and the ability to know how long we have to treat the the animal. We aren't going to treat them much differently, but it has to do with the duration of treatment. It can be weeks in an animal who has a a dog, particularly who has advanced uh, uh, pancreatitis. Uh, In the uh, the cat, it's frequently uh, a long-term therapy uh, in order to keep uh, the chronic inflammation under control, and we usually have to supplement with some uh, some vitamin B12 as well. And so that's the uh, what's called the exocrine side of uh, the pancreas, and the insulin uh, is uh, side is called the endocrine portion, and that's the portion that produces insulin. And if you don't have enough insulin, you have diabetes, and dogs and cats get diabetes. One last point on uh, on the pancreatitis is that some dogs are at greater risk. The schnauzer is probably the highest one uh, as far as risk because then here they seem to have. Uh, a genetic predisposition to having more fat in their blood than they should. And that increased fat in their blood puts them at risk. That's called lipidosis. And that lipidosis means that there's too much cholesterol and too many triglycerides, and that can predispose to it. So the use of a low-fat diet, and there are many good ones out there made by the the premium dog food manufacturers that can help control uh, the lipids in the blood and decrease the likelihood of pancreatitis uh, in the animal. Leptospirosis is a disease that's endemic to the Northwest Ohio, Southeast Michigan area. It's a bacteria-like disease. It can affect dogs. We, uh, We have never seen a case in a cat. Uh, it potentially could, but we don't worry about it in cats because the incidence is so low. But the um, but we feel it's an extremely important vaccine and something that uh, you should talk to your veterinarian about on a regular basis as to how frequently uh, an injection should be given to booster um, that leptospirosis vaccine. I would one thing I would recommend is is that you uh, you never not do it because any mammal in Northwest Ohio is capable of transmitting that d- disease and leptospirosis is potentially uh, contagious to people. Uh, and finally, there's always been worried about reactions of uh, the pet to the vaccine, but the answer is that the newer vaccines are highly purified. Those are highly purified ones are used. There won't be a, uh, a problem with reactivity. It's time to go, and when we get back, we're going to talk about uh, cat litter boxes and cat litter. I'm sure you'll be on the edge of your seats. How do you sell dirt for hundreds of times more than it's worth? 
Well, that's the dilemma that cat litter companies are um, confronted with. And so what do they do is they, they know that cat pee and cat poo is strong and smelly and that people don't like smells in their house. And so what they do is that they, they try to market and figure out ways to sell their tidy cat or their ever clean or whatever product trying to uh, sell. They're, they're trying to enhance it. Well, the reality is, is that no, uh, nobody's ever asked a, uh, a cat what they might like. And if given their druthers, a cat would just as soon have the, the dirt in the garden and a new spot every day. So it's probably best if you, uh, if you stay away from any litters that have scents or deodorizers or anything like that, you know, sodium bicarbonate, baking soda added to the litter because it can turn the cat off. Other things about the litter box, that, you know, about the litter that can turn the cats off is that if you have a liner in there, they just don't, they don't want their litter box to crinkle. You know, they want to be able to get in there and dig. It, it needs to be deep enough so that they can dig and construct. You know, they're pretty, they were the original Seabees and uh, they, uh, they, they like to make that, uh, that potty hole and then they like to cover it up. And if your cat doesn't cover its litter, it's probably telling you, I'll use this, but I really don't like the way it feels on my feet and I don't want to, I don't want to dig it. So you might start thinking about looking for something else. Uh, if you have a kitty that's uh, showing reluctance to uh, use the litter box, starting to potty outside the box, uh, that's a problem that needs to be gotten over uh, onto right away. You need to make sure it's uh, it's not a, a reflection of, a, of an inflammatory process in the bladder. You need to make sure that it's not a behavioral problem associated with stressors that are going on in the house or stray cats that are outside the house. And uh, you need to make sure that the litter box is big enough. Um, if you've got a big cat, 12, 14 pound cat, you know, and you're trying to put them in a, uh, in a, in a, a eight by 10 box or even a 14 by 16 uh, box, uh, that's just not big enough. It can't get in there and turn around and it's going to have its butt hanging over the edge and then that's not going to accomplish what we want. So the bigger the box, the better from a cat's perspective because it's more like what they have outside. The cleaner the box, the better. Uh, if the box is kept really clean because cats like to go to to uh, clean spaces every time they potty, now we're, we're making them happier. And it's important that we make the cats happy um, for them to be able to make us happy by using their litter box on a regular basis. We have conversations uh, on a on a almost daily basis with clients whose uh, cats are frustrating the heck out of them. And the sad thing is, is that there are many cats that are given up because of inappropriate uh, urination and primarily, but pooping outside the box as well, less often. It, it usually can be solved if all the attention to all the details is made in making sure that we're using the right kind of litter, the right size of the box. The boxes are in a place where it's easy to get to. It's not a schlep from the second floor to the basement to get there, particularly if you've got an older cat who has sore joints. You know, making that uh, two-story round trip is uh, is stressful, and they may say it's not worth it. So, you know, think about your cat and what's best for your cat, not necessarily what's what's best for you. And uh, figure find places that will make the cat give the cat a little privacy um, and make the cat pretty happy. I'm going to come back a little bit and tell you about we're talking a lot about cats here today and I think it's important to to remind you that this newest uh, part of the flea control spectrum for cats is Comfortis. Uh, they just received approval for cats and that's really going to be huge because I had a, a family in just this week that has uh, they have eight cats in the house and they are absolutely crawling with fleas and they've applied the, the brand name topical products to them and they are still loaded with fleas. Just ordered a, a batch more and uh, they said, look, we're going to, we want to do it all. So they're going to use the topical that they've ordered and already paid for. And then they turn around and bought, uh, bought more Comfortis uh, in appropriate sizes for each of the cats in the house so that we're going to try to get this, uh, this, this problem under control. And then treating the house becomes an issue as well. And so of course, there's always the exterminator, but the uh, worst part about it, a lot of the exterminators that you call, and if you're going to call one, you best make sure that they're going to move the furniture because if they don't move the furniture, they're not going to get the places in the house that really need to be treated. Are they going to in some way uh, treat underneath the bed? Because a house with cats, that's a great place for cats to go and a great place for fleas to harbor because you can't get at them. And uh, use, the, use Google 
Google to search uh, flea lights. They work really well. And if you can find one that's a uh, greenish color to the light and a uh, variable intensity to the light, you may find that that's a, that's a very effective way of your treating the fleas in your house. And you can move it from room to room as you on a day-to-day basis if you want. The um, subject that uh, that we get talked about a lot in the office, particularly with puppies, and one that's uh, you know that's uh, kind of disgusting from the uh, owner's perspective as well as it is just to talk about it is is animals that want to eat their stool, and uh, you know the dogs kind of like the cat's litter box and the cat stool, and that's something of a of a problem, and that's got a whole different solution to it. But uh, you know if a puppy has been raised in a cage and lived in a cage for an extended period of time and has been asked to pee and poo in the same place and eat and drink all in the same place, they tend to be fastidious and their uh, their natural imperative is to keep their den clean and they perceive that as their den and so they will eat, they will turn and they'll eat their stool. Well, there are a variety of ways to try to prevent that from happening and and it starts off with the simple application of some meat tenderizer to the, each meal for the, for the dog and uh, if that doesn't work, then uh, uh, natural, you know, fresh pineapple crushed and the juice added to the food if the animal will eat it with that, that'll sometimes happen. That's because pineapple has uh, digestive enzymes. That's why I use pineapple juice to uh, uh, to put in, a, you know, in a kind of a tough piece of meat as you get it ready to cook. Uh, pineapple will help break down some of the uh, some of the fibers in that in that meat. And then there's a product that's out called Forbid, and we've had some moderate success with Forbid, but not the greatest. And the best thing is a new product that's come along called Copperban, and it's a chew that you can. Can give to the animal and it varies in size uh, is the, how much you give by the size of the animal and uh, as a result uh, you can go ahead and uh, find that to be an effective tool and you don't have to use it forever you try to use it until you've gone maybe a week or two without any stool eating stop wait and see how things go if it starts right back up then then do it again and keep that trial and error going until you've got uh, until you've got it under control it's important for you to know that uh, there's a lot of talk in uh, in dogs and online and uh, everything about separation anxiety and you know when you look at a dog with separation anxiety that dog is really under a lot of stress. There are a great many more dogs that have just anxiety. And it's not that they they don't get all worked up about leaving. They aren't destructive to the house, but a storm rolls in and they're and they're shaken and they're scared and they're frightened and they're trying to hide or they're just uh, they're just anxious with the when the doorbell rings or if somebody comes in and they skitter away. These are forms of anxiety and there are there are simple non-medicated ways of managing and trying to help a dog with this anxiety and then ultimately we can use the more powerful um, anti-anxiety medications like Prozac and clomipramine uh, in order to control it. But we start with uh, a couple of really simple things, a product called Anxitane, which is a synthesized uh, L-theanine that's an extract of green tea, comes in a pill form, highly purified, very concentrated, um, does a really good job. And then a collar called a NurtureCom collar or uh, a uh, spray called dog appeasing pheromone both work on the same premises with a medication that is secreted uh, in mother's milk and it's been synthesized, been shown to be an anti-anxiety product. And so in the nurture calm, it's a collar and your dog wears it for a month and then you replace the collar and the dog appeasing pheromone. Uh, you, it comes as a collar as well, but it's a lot more expensive than the uh, uh, than the nurture calm. And you can use the spray in, in areas where uh, or on the dog to help reduce its uh, anxiety. Well, we're going to take a break and come back at the end here. I can't believe it's the end of another of another program. This time just flies, and I have such a good time doing it. I would really appreciate if you if you do send your requests in because I think that uh, it'll be more interactive that way, and we'll have a you know we'll have a great deal more fun with it that way. I want to I just gonna brag a little bit more about Sylvania Vet, and uh, given that they're a sponsor and that's my business, I think I can do that. Um, and there's one thing that we constantly emphasize: we are available twenty four seven. We provide emergency 
emergency care. It's amazing the number of clients that don't that don't know that, and that even established clients that end up going to the emergency clinic and are disappointed when they when they get there and you know they don't have access to records or anything like that. We we have our patients' records and we're there and our our patients are never alone. So we think that that 24/7 care, that commitment to you as a client and that commitment to your pets is uh, is unique to this area and is something that uh, you should seriously consider when you're looking uh, for a veterinarian. We know it's not easy to change. We know that it's really convenient to go to the guy just down the street. But the reality is is that you don't have to come in that often. So why not go where where it's best, you know? And I think that's something that's that's really important. One of the really cool things that we have is a very special cat boarding uh, space with uh, vertical uh, cataminiums. They're multi-leveled. Uh, they have a they have a picture window that they look out over a beautiful garden that uh, has bird feeders and uh, and some of the most gorgeous flowers and fauna that you're going to see. And that's very enriching for the cats. And they also have a private space if they want to get up there and sleep in the sleeping loft or if they just are more secure up there. We brush them every day. We weigh them every day to be sure that they're doing. We check their hydration every day. We get them out. We play with them. Uh, they get a little bit of exercise. And it's uh, it's a, the uh, cat boarding at Sylvania Vet, terrific and is uh, uh, superior to uh, to many places. And, and, and boarding your cat, uh, though it's stressful to leave the home, is really superior to leaving your cat at home, a neighbor coming in and checking on them because uh, the, the cats find that equally stressful. So why not leave your cat in a, in a place where it's going to be looked at and cared for? And if it has a problem where it requires medications or, gosh forbid, it has diabetes, then it should definitely uh, board with us. Well, we're winding down and so I want to remind you about a, uh, a couple of events this Sunday at uh, Burnham uh, Park in uh, in downtown Sylvania. Uh, we're going to do the Plooch Plunge uh, at uh, just before the plumber pool is drained and uh, a $5 donation is going to be made for that and all that money is going to go to the um, to an area organization that's working on trying to establish uh, a dog park. So come on out from 1 to 3 to the Pooch Plunge. Uh, Sylvania Vet will be there. There'll be uh, some rescues there. Uh, it's going to be a good time uh, for on a, what's hopefully a nice sunny September uh, afternoon. And you won't miss all the football games because you probably won't be there for the full period of time. The other thing is uh, Dog Days of September on uh, uh, September 22nd at the Lucas County Rec Center. That's a long all-day event nine to four it's just there's so much fun at that event and you definitely ought to plan on coming and you can bring your dogs to that one as well and there's rescues there there's food there there's the dog uh, there's the wiener dog nationals and uh, so it's a uh, it's a time where you can come and spend an, uh, an awful lot of fun there's only one greatest pet and it lives in your home